hopefully it'll all stay that way. I know, like, what's that name? Steve told me they had a problem back there or something. I don't know. He, uh, worship. My name is Andres Flores and I serve as the River Worship Assistant. Here are some ways to connect with the mission and ministry of Hickson United Methodist Church in the near future. First, as we make our way through our Lenten series, Rooted and Growing, we want to encourage everyone to participate with their Sunday school class or small group. Small groups are an historical practice in the United Methodist Church that help us foster intimate connections, nurture disciplines that mature our faith, and encourage active participation in ministry. If you would like to join a Wednesday night small group for the Rooted and Growing series, please call the church office and we will help you get you connected. Next, we would like to offer the opportunity to dedicate flowers during our sanctuary services. You may have noticed a floral arrangement near the stage in the sanctuary. 
These floral arrangements are dedicated in celebration of anniversaries, milestone birthdays, loved ones who have passed on, or any other special occasion. After they are dedicated in the service, these floral arrangements are broken apart and delivered to our homebound church members to brighten their day. If you would like to dedicate a floral arrangement, please contact the church office. Lastly, we have an announcement for any current or rising college students. This year, we have a new application process for the McConnell Scholarship. All submissions will be completed fully online. No paper copies will be accepted. The application will open on March 1st, and the deadline for the completed application is April 7th, 2024 at midnight. You can access this application via our website. As always, thank you for being a vital part of the mission, vision, and goals here at Hickson United Methodist Church. Have a great week. Good morning. Welcome to the river service here at Hicks United Methodist Church. I'm Steve Bowman. I'm one of the lay leaders here. Jim asked me on my way up to the podium, do I know where Andres was in that video? And I do. Reed tried to throw a curve at us this week. Matter of fact, early this week when they were up there together shooting that, she sent me a, a, a snapshot said, do you know where I, we are? And I said, yeah. Did you find the Book of Secrets up there while you were there in the bell tower of the church? The, the steeple, yeah. So uh, I said, you know, uh, unfortunately, Nicholas Cage and Harrison Ford have beat you there already and got all the good stuff out. The Ark of the Covenant's not there, the Holy Grail and the Book of Secrets. We moved them somewhere else. So, uh, but, but you almost had me. You almost had me this week. But uh, anyway, that, that's pretty cool. It's a lot bigger up there than, than you would think. So, uh, oh, I'm gonna say this, Jim, I thought about this in, in class today. You realize this is the 50th anniversary of, the, of that sanctuary this year. So I think at some point we need to celebrate that in some, in some respect, we really do, uh, especially with, uh, kind of goes along with what we're talking about with our Lenten series. But I didn't think about that until they sent me that. And I said, but it's 1974. So anyway, all right, well, back to where we were. Uh, once again, thank you for joining us for worship today. Um, and if you're a visitor, thank you for spending your worship time with us. Uh, if you are a visitor, first time, or you've been here a couple of times and you haven't filled out a Connect card, we have some little cards back there in the back on the tables that have just a little bit of information about you so we can get in touch with you and let you know a little bit more about what's going on here at the life of Hicks and UMC. So if you don't mind filling one of those out, we'll get in touch with you. Thank you for being part of worship with us today. We also welcome those folks that are with us via the World Wide Web. Uh, we're blessed to be able to offer that as an outreach here. Um, you see our prayer station over here to the right. Some candles have already been lit. If you're familiar with that, you know that before the service starts or while the band plays in the next few minutes, feel free to come up and light a candle if you have a prayer request or a praise. Uh, and that's all I'll have. Jim is going to be leading us in worship today, so I'm going to turn it over to Jim Lewis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. It's good to be together today. Um, I'm honored to be with you. Pastor Matt, if you uh, are on his Facebook, you've probably seen 25 pictures because he is in Cancun seeing Dave Matthews Band, I think for the 30th time. Um, <laughs> And I'm not kidding on that. So he invited me to uh, lead this morning, and I'm honored to do that. So as Steve mentioned, we're in the middle of a Lenten series uh, that's called Rooted and Growing. But if you're not familiar with Lent, if you've been in a tradition or uh, an upbringing where that hasn't uh, celebrated Lent in the church, just really briefly, Lent is a time before Easter. It's 40 days plus Sundays, kind of marking out the 40 days Jesus spent in the wilderness. Uh, plus Sundays, and it's a time where we reflect kind of on what leads Jesus to the cross, because sometimes we, on this side of Easter, the original Easter, sometimes we don't forget, we forget what led Jesus to the cross, 
And so Lent is a time for us to reflect on our own need for that, on our own brokenness, on the ways that we live as if God wasn't a reality, as we live separate from God. But God says, I'm not separate. I've come to destroy all sense of separateness. And Lent is a time where we reflect on those places that maybe things have gotten in the way and we are going to release those to God and go, oh, I'm recognizing that's in the way. I'm going to let you have that and um, offer my life to you in a new way. So that's the season of Lent that we begin today. With that, let's join in a word of prayer. Loving God, you are good. And today we come to experience your goodness. And Lord, we know that so much in our lives get in the way of, of us and our experience of your goodness and us not trusting it the way you call us to. And so this time... This morning, help us to recognize what might be getting in the way and the ways you are defeating that power and that you are calling us to you and that you have connected with us at deep levels. So may we experience that in a deep way today, in this time. And all God's children said, amen. Good morning. So um, as we stand together in worship this morning, um, inadvertently, we ended up picking a we set, right? And a, and, a, and a we set, ultimately, if you look at corporate worship, a lot of the songs that we sing in corporate worship are I songs, right? Um, even classic, because I surrender all and whatever, and now we have, you know, I could sing of your love forever and all of these other I songs. But ultimately, we are made for corporate worship. We are made to worship together. So... Stephanie and I picked music separately, and then she combined them all into songs, and we send it up, and we get a text from Jim who was like, amazing, you picked we songs, and we were like, we did? <laughs> so as we enter into corporate worship, this is, this is energy. This is, this is our opportunity to, to lean into the mission of God that we have, and, and so carry that energy. If you're a singer, sing along. If you're not a singer, Clap. If you're too embarrassed to clap, welcome to Methodism. So enjoy the opportunity to commune with each other and to reach our voices, our bodies out to God in this corporate worship. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. Cause we are your church. We need your power in us. We seek your kingdom first. We hunger and Refuse to waste our lives 
Could we live like your grace is stronger than all the faults and failures? Could we live like your love is deeper than our hearts could fathom? Could we live? Thank you. You may have a seat. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. That was really helpful to my spirit. Um, as we go into a time of prayer, I, uh, I'm going to share a couple uh, prayers that were written by others. Uh, Pastor Matt gave me a Bible for Christmas uh, that I just really have enjoyed. And in the back of it, it has um, classic prayers that uh, people through the history have written, and they've been really inspiring to me to just think about how other people have, have worded their hearts to God. And so for our time of prayer, we're actually going to do two from this and then the one that Jesus offered us, the Lord's Prayer. So three 
pre-written prayers, but that can express our hearts. So let these be more than just words that I read off a page, but let's let them uh, fill our hearts and express our hearts to God through these words. The first one um, is from St. Francis of Assisi. You might recognize that one. And the second one is one that's called Teach Us to Love, and it's from Henry Alford, who lived in the 17th or 19th century, excuse me. So let's pray together. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to consoled, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. O oh God, perfect us in love that we may conquer all selfishness and hatred of others. Fill our hearts with thy joy and shed abroad in them thy peace which passeth, passeth all understanding, that so those murmurings and disputings to which we are too prone may be overcome. Make us long-suffering and gentle and thus subdue our hastiness and angry tempers, and grant that we may bring forth the blessed fruits of your Spirit to thy praise and glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So at this time in our worship, we invite any of our children to head to the back for growing in faith. And Malia is back there to meet you. And we are so glad you've been able to join us and hope you have a blessed time with each other there and growing in faith. This time in the service, we also take a moment to highlight some of the missions and the ministries that you all are a part of because of your support and you're part of our mission here at Hicks United Methodist Church. And today, we are uplifting uh, a favorite aspect for me, and that is the group that is behind me uh, most of the time here, um, that was behind me earlier, and that is our river worship team. And we talk about them a lot here, but this is a group of almost 40 people who rotate. Uh, this is a unique system that we have. Uh, we have that rotate week to week. Six of them are worship leaders, and they meet uh, with the pastors or with Andres and myself and get learn the scripture for the week and where the pastor is going, and they plan the music. And then uh, rotating musicians join them. They lead the rehearsal. One of the most beautiful things, you've heard me say this too, is that uh, it's intergenerational. So you have from 16 to, I won't say how old Billy is um, up here, <laughs> but uh, you have from 16 to uh, all ages in this group, and it's beautiful. And three of our worship leaders are under the age of 21. So that's pretty powerful, and they lead us as well. As we say, youth are not the church of the future, not only. They are the church of now here at Hicks United Methodist Church. So we are grateful for uh, the River Worship Team and your support that allows it. And I'll say, if there's someone in here who wonders if you might want to be a part of it, we have need. Uh, we always have need. There is a place for you. Um, and if you don't feel like you're strong enough, 
we will mentor you in, and we have ways of doing that. Uh, so we could use any of these roles more of. So we'd love to have you. Um, and this is a time also where we remember how God has blessed us and offer back what we can. And we have several ways that you can do that. Um, in addition to being part of the ministries here at church, you can offer your resources, the, the fruits that God has given you back to God through an offering. And that can happen in three ways here. At the back, we have some offering boxes, and you can put it in there. You also can go online, and there's a place where you can give online. And finally, there's a text-to-give number on there, and you just put the amount that you would want in that with that number, and it'll walk you through everything for there. So thank you for the ways that you support this mission and ministry here. Um, amazing things are happening. Uh, this is a thriving, fruit-filled United Methodist Church, and I'm grateful. It's you all. It's we, right, Chris, where Chris is? It's we that are doing this together. Let's invite Ginny forward who is going to share our scripture. Would you please stand for the reading of our scripture today? Our scripture is from Romans 12, verses 1 through 10. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, And these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. This is God's word for all people. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated. I am so grateful to be able to have been asked to share with you for this second week of our series, Rooted and Growing, Recapturing the Wesley's Vision. The series was birthed out of conversations among church leadership team last year as we considered the challenges that are currently facing our United Methodist Church. During a time when we recognize that many hold differing perspectives on important topics of our shared Christian faith, Returning to the roots of our heritage as followers of Jesus can help us together navigate a more faithful pathway forward. Because sadly, in our current culture, disagreement on hot-button issues can too easily distract us from the core tenets of our faith and our mission together to partner with God for the transformation of the world by offering help, hope, and healing through Jesus Christ. And so this series, Rooted and Growing, seeks to help us answer together this vitally important question. How do we, as a vibrant and thriving United Methodist congregation, discern and hold close the things that are most important in our mission and ministry together. So with that in mind, let's share prayer. Loving God, you are good. You are the source of all goodness. And Lord, we need that. We need your goodness. We need your perspective. We need your truth of who you are and how you are at work in this world. And so in these moments, as we unpack one part of this series, may what we hear today 
be your words. No matter what I speak, Lord, may it be your spirit that translates it into the hearts and minds of each one of us, beginning with me. So, Lord, we give you this time. We open our hearts, our ears, our minds to you. In Christ's name, all God's children said, amen. So, rooted and growing. Which is it? Are we rooted or are we growing? And, of course, the answer is yes. Both and. If we're rooted well, we're growing. And if we're growing well, we must be rooted As we are rooted together in unity and the core tenets of our Christian faith, we can anticipate growing together in Jesus' way of love. And in addition to remembering how the roots of our faith grow into the fruits of God's love, this series is inviting us to consider other aspects of our faith that live in tension. So last week... Pastor Matt considered the tension of faith and works. Are we saved by faith alone? Or are works a primary part of an authentic faith? And of course, the answer is again, yes, both and. We also, at the luncheon, considered word and spirit. Does God primarily speak to us through the world, through the word as revealed in Scripture? Or is the Spirit the primary means by which God reveals himself in our lives? And again, the answer is yes, both and. So this morning we're asking the question, is faith personal, something that's primarily in each of us individually, or is it social, something that is shared and collective in nature? And one more time, you can say it with me, the answer is yes, both and. And you got it. But before we can dive into that specifically, I want to spend a few minutes briefly talking about tension. Because as I grow older and experience more life, I'm recognizing more and more that the world is complex. People are complex, relationships are complex, and this often means that things that I used to see as primarily black and white are not always so clear cut. There is a tension between them that I often try to deny, but reality says I must acknowledge. So just a couple examples, simple, but evening. Is evening day or night, or is it somewhere in between? Okay, so some of you know I'm a firefighter, and when I'm working on a house fire and I need water, is it a matter of just telling the people, turn on the hydrant, or Is there a certain amount of on, a pressure, a tension, that I need to be able to get the most water on the fire while still being able to control that hose? Absolutely. How about ethically? Is something always right and always wrong, or does it sometimes depend on circumstances? Tough question. If we are honest, life is lived in tension. But sadly, we typically only think of tension as a negative thing. It evokes negative thoughts of stress and strain and conflict, a tension headache, tension in a relationship, tension at work. But tension can also be a very important, healthy, and positive thing. Consider surface tension in water that allows some things to float. Or how about the adjustable tilt tension knob on your favorite office chair that gives you the ability to adjust the back and forth motion to just the right of pressure for a person your weight to sit and lean comfortably the way you want. Now, of course, my favorite example as a musician is a guitar string, okay? For it it to do its purpose, It has to live in tension. If it's too loose, it's just going to flop around, and if it's too tight, it's going to break. But trusting the tension creates beautiful music. See, not only that, when we can trust the tension and use it properly, tension can build bridges. Tension, it comes from the Latin word to stretch, and the ability to stretch is directly linked to our ability to grow physically, emotionally, spiritually. 
as we choose to trust that, much of our lives live in tension, including many aspects of our faith, we can discover a deep and true beauty that is living and breathing love. Love that is rooted and love that is growing. In our passage today that Jenny read, we see another important example of this healthy tension, especially as it relates to today's theme, personal and social. So the passage began, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what is God's will, his good, perfect, and pleasing will. This is part of the passage. It's primarily personal, describing faith's work in us. Then it continues a few verses later. We have many parts in one body, but the parts don't all have the same function. In the same way, though, there are many of us, we are one body in Christ. Individually, we belong to each other. This part of the passage is primarily social. And of course, this was central to Jesus' understanding of life, the focus of all life, the focus of the law, the focus of all the prophets, as he said, you recognize this, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and strength, the personal, and love your neighbor as yourself, the social. And he said, this sums up all the law and the prophets together. So let's briefly take an important look at each of these the both and of social and personal, because neither of the sides are minimized. The, their part of the tension is vital. So, what is personal when it comes to our faith? And you might immediately say, it's all personal. And you'd be right, in the both and kind of way. In our book that we are studying, Recapturing uh, the Wesley's Vision, Author Paul Chakot puts it this way. He says, The essence of the Christian religion is an experience of the love of God in Christ changing our hopes and desires. That is something profoundly personal. I trust none of us would be here today if we hadn't had some kind of personal encounter with the living Christ. It is a faith that carries us and empowers us in all aspects of daily life, and no one can make that commitment for you. It is up to each of us to recognize and receive God's embrace for ourselves. This is a core tenet of our Christian faith, and Wesley's mission was built on this simple foundation. Chakot continues in the book, the personal encounter of the individual with God is the starting point of a journey of faith, the beginning of a loving relationship that draws a person into a whole new set of relationships within the family of God. This is the beginning of the social dimension of our faith. Several years back, I had the opportunity to be on staff for a national youth gathering in St. Louis that brought 40,000 young people. It was awesome. One of our speakers that week was the Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who won a Nobel Peace Prize for his work to oppose apartheid in South Africa. And as a member of the staff, I had the privilege of being able to have a meal with him. And it was a powerful moment, and I just will never forget his primary message to us that week. It was about the African understanding of community. And it said this through a word called Ubuntu. And the way he described Ubuntu was this phrase, I am because we are. And learning about this changed me because I began to realize the vital role that others play in my own well-being. And I can say 100% without any hesitation that I would not be who I am today if it weren't for this community here at Hicks United Methodist Church. I'd be a different person without you. Now, of course, our experience with others can have helpful or unhelpful effects. And yes, I've experienced some unhelpful ones. I probably have been part of contributing to some unhelpful ones as well. But at the same time, there is no doubt that your primary influence for me has been one of positive, faith-centered transformation in Christ. And I hope it goes the other way as well. Because of you, 
I have experienced Christ in real and tangible ways as we partner together in mission and ministry in this world. So in fact, Bishop Tutu continued this phrase. It didn't stop there. He said, I am because we are. Then he continues, we are because Christ is. The center of our lives, both personally and socially, is the love of Christ. Christians are, by our very nature of our faith, drawn into community, centered in Christ. So I'm reminded, and I read this to our students this morning, of the early church in the book of Acts, telling of what it was first like to be a part of these followers of Jesus. And they described it this way from Acts chapter 4. It's actually also in 2. It's emphasized multiple times. But think about this. The community of believers was one in heart and mind. None of them would say, this is mine, about any of their possessions, but held everything in common. The apostles continued to bear witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. There's the personal. An abundance of grace was at work among them all. There was no needy persons among them. Those who owned properties or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds from the sales, and place them in the care and under the authority of the apostles. Then it was distributed to anyone who was in need. The social. When we celebrate our offering moments every week, we're celebrating how we are gathering what we have and putting it together for a better whole. The both and the personal, the social aspect of our Christian faith begins inwardly with an encounter with Christ and then it flows outwardly to our relationships with one another. Also, from this book, Wesley's, the Wesleys assumed that God's love was potent enough to transform both individual lives and the life of the world. He held the individual and the community together, concerned equally about the parts as for the whole of God's design. The consequence was that the early Methodist people discovered the freedom of living in the grace of God within the context of a disciplined fellowship, a committed community. I love that. Disciplined fellowship, committed community. Both and. Profoundly personal and essentially social. Religion that is purely inward actually works against itself. That's why I say essentially social. To turn our Christian faith into a private faith is to destroy it. Christianity cannot survive without connection with God and with one another. One of John Wesley's most famous quotes illustrates this. He says, holy solidarities is a phrase no more consistent with the gospel than holy adulterers. The gospel of Christ knows no religion but social, no holiness but social holiness. Faith working by love is the length and the breadth and the depth and the height of Christian perfection. Another word is Christian transformation, us becoming more like Christ who lives in us. So in fact, our social holiness must go even farther than just our mutual support of each other. It is because of God's love for us and Christ's love in us that we reach out into the world to walk with and care for others. We think of Jesus' life and his witness in his life and also these words that he said, whatever you have done to the least of these, you have done unto me. Holiness, it's social because God is social. He created us, human beings, in God's image to be relational creatures. We become fully human when we share in the relationships God initiates with us through the people that we meet all along our way. So returning to a quote from the first chapter that really stood out to me, and my wife was reading it this past week, and she had this aha moment that she said out loud in the house. I'm like, what? And it was this quote right here. Chakot says, faith in Christ is not the goal. To become loving as Christ is loving is the purpose of our discipleship. Love is the end towards which we move from faith's foundation. So as I invite the worship team back forward, I also want to name something subtly tempting. 
uh, especially in our current climate, and that's to slip into faith as primarily social. With an emphasis on individualism, it's so easy to have a me and Jesus alone priority. Um, in fact, Chris stole part of my message. I don't know if you got a copy of this because the rest of it is what he said in his call to worship. Um, so many of our worship songs, modern, are singular in nature rather than communal. You are, we're singing in a group, you are my God. I praise you. I want to follow you. Now, these are important. Don't get me wrong. They are just so emphasized in what we do. We can be in a room full of people and we're singing as individuals. So what I shared a minute ago, it's worth repeating. Religion that is purely inward works against itself. And while this may be a stretch, what I'm about to say, I have a sense that our emphasis in this culture on private faith and individualism plays a significant part in our current epi epidemic of loneliness that we're facing. Our private lives and our private faith are robbing us of our deep need for connection and community. I need you. You need me. I am because we are. And let me put it this way as I close. More than a deep need, it's who we're created to be. And I want to give some examples. This is in our very nature as Human beings created in the image of God. Think about it this way. God's creation itself is dependent upon this inward, outward tension. In creation, the oceans give their water to the clouds, the rain over the land giving water to form lakes, rivers, and streams, which in turn gives water to the plants and animals, ultimately giving back to the oceans to start the cycle again. In our bodies, we exhale, we give carbon uh, dioxide to the plants, who then in turn give oxygen back to us or an electricity for our engineers out there. Electrons flow in a current, but only as long as there's a circle, which is called a circuit. What happens if you flip a light switch? You're stopping the circuit. You're putting a break in the circuit. What happens if a body of water separates itself from this cycle? It goes stagnant. Ever heard of the Dead Sea? What happens if we said, I'm not going to give my carbon dioxide away anymore? I'm putting a bag over my head and keep it for myself. We die. The most basic reality of God's creation is this. Nothing can exist for itself. It's personal and it's social. Perfect faith, perfect love are not self-seeking. They live in a vital inward, outward tension. Every living system, if it wants to be healthy, must be part of the cycle of beneficent receiving and giving. That's our very identity as the church. So I close with this quote from Reverend Susan Henry Crow. We live our lives together, and we live our lives with all of God's creation. We walk with one another. We walk with those who are poor, those who are vulnerable, those who live on the margins of life. It is a gift that God has given us and we have claimed as Methodist Christians who are committed to social holiness that we would be with one another in this journey as we live our lives together. All God's people said, It's
personal note, if you are in a place where you've forgotten who you are, or maybe you haven't sensed like you've ever known that, this is a place where we can walk with you and help you discover who you are in Christ. Help Christ in you come and open up so you can understand the unique expression of that. I am because we are. And on a social sense, as a church, Let's continue to be it. And I say continue intentionally because I love our expression of how Christ lives and works in you, into the world. But also as we go into the season of Lent and we go into a time in United Methodist Church where we're questioning some things and people want to throw us to all extremes, let's find where the tension is. Let's not let the world throw us to the extremes. Let's find the both and of what it means to faithfully follow Christ and serve one another in the core tenets of our Christian faith. So friends, as you go this week, know that God loves you personally and that through you, God and through us is changing this world. The time is now. Church, arise and go. And all God's children said, amen. The time is now, come true.